this morning the clock was striking four. Went home this morning the clock was Brian Van Winkle Magda is touching my head. <laughs> we are videotaping now for the book trailer for tomorrow we will live here coming out November 11th from Salt Publishing. Truly, Salt Publishing, is it? Perhaps the most historic moment in publishing. Yes, have you heard of Salt Publishing before? No. No. I assure you, it's incredibly prestigious. I'm Ryan Van Winkle. <laughs> I feel like I'm. What's wrong? Why are you laughing? What do I do? Oh, am I? Am I? Is this it? Is this yes. me doing it? Yes. <laughs> what am I supposed to say? This is terrible, America. Absolutely terrible. That I got an email that asked me to talk about what it was like to win the Crashall Prize. It felt great. How do we begin? I thought we already did. No, that was not. The, we can't use that as the beginning. Well, that can't be the beginning. How is that going to make anyone want to buy the book? This is all about selling a book to people <laughs> and getting them to want to, to want to engage and be excited by poetry. Are you going to be asking questions? No. Look at the camera. You're, you're doing it now. Okay. <laughs> this is this. Uh, let's start. Let's start this way. Yeah. Go ahead. Take two. Take. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I have to say something like, Why am I a poet? Um, next question. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Wait, come on, we need to start it with where we are. We need to start again with where we are. We're in Snip and Sip, a hair salon and massage parlor in the legendary Forest Cafe here in Edinburgh, where uh, I've worked with a bunch of great people for the last but she's a decade, we just turned 10 years old, and uh, the forest, is, for those of you who don't know, is volunteer run, collectively owned, free arts and events space, currently undergoing a little bit of a threat by the fact that our landlords need to sell the building. So we're having a massive fundraiser tonight, and we're taking time out of this right now uh, to film this video about my book, Tomorrow We Will Live Here. Um, but it's very strange for me to talk about my book or one of my projects, because for so long, I've been involved with, I guess, for lack of a better term, would be called uh, a community project. Uh, of course, I, I don't like the word community. Uh, I would prefer to say I've been involved with a project with my friends doing cool and interesting things like publishing books and making records and throwing events and uh, generally having a good time. Uh, here in this space, in this building for the last 10 years. You can hear, probably, hopefully, people kind of moving around and doing things and music and stuff. And at some point, someone will probably play the piano that's right outside that door and ruin the entire shoot. Uh, but it's very strange for me because to, to talk about myself and, uh, you know, quote unquote, my work as, as a poet or being a poet, uh, when for so long uh, I've been much more interested in doing that as part of, uh, of a collective experience. Does that make sense? But that said, it is a, a, a great, a, a great, you know, it's a great thing to have your book coming out. It's a great thing to be published by Saul. It's really amazing that I won uh, the Crash All Prize with the other, the other excellent writers that won that. It's a bit intimidating uh, for me to think about the book actually coming out because uh, for so long uh, I've been a poet that has had no actual book, and uh, and I've just appeared in a few a few magazines and things. I mean, this is going to sound really stupid, but I was feeling that psychological pressure in the run up to, to before Salt took the book on. Uh, I was writing new stuff that was a little bit different. I wanted to explore different themes in my work than what I had done in this collection. But I felt because that because it hadn't been published, I couldn't quite do that yet. It's really nice to just have this body of work collected, bound, and ready to go out and be sold to people um, so that I can kind of continue to, to move on, to move to the next level, and try to do something new and unique uh, with the next book that I haven't done before.
which maybe makes it sound like this book isn't very good, but that's not true. I think this book is the best I can make it. The book for me is about, uh, it's, it opens with a quote by uh, Bill McKibben, and, and it says, why leave if you can live in a place that you understand and in a place that understands you? And I think the book actually was very much dealing, without me really knowing it, but, and, and not in a very obvious way, the book's dealing very much with me uh, leaving my desire to leave my home country, uh, my decision to settle here, and what people do with their decisions. And I wonder if I should even say this about my father, but my father a very long time ago said to me, uh, he said, you know, all I ever wanted was, you know, a house and a nice family and a wife and good kids. And then he looked at me and he said, well, now I've got that. And I'm happy, but it's not enough. And I guess the book deals with people who are kind of in that situation, who have chased down some kind of a dream, but don't quite know what to do with it. And maybe they are slightly regretful, or at least considerate of the fact that maybe they could have made some other decisions in their lives. But yeah, so that's what, I mean, the book's about, the book's about uh, people who are in a place that they're not quite sure about. And I guess we've all made decisions. We've followed down a career, we've done four years of university for something that we haven't necessarily loved by the time we come out of it. And I think that's sort of what that book's about. But it's, but there's characters in there. Like, like the guy, I mean, the perfect example would be the dude who ran away from his family after September 11th. He worked at the trade center, World Trade Center and he used September 11th. This is a real story. Uh, I can't remember where I found it from. I guess this is where it comes back to inspiration. I can't remember where I found it. Well, you know, September 11th happened. Death, destruction, fear, chaos in New York City. And there were a handful of people who took that opportunity to say, you know what, I always wanted to leave my wife and kids and move to Florida. So I'm going to do that now. And they got on the first bus out of there. Uh, the notion of that was very powerful to me. And I don't, I, I don't know if those people actually are happy now or any happier than they were before. Presumably, it's quite a difficult thing to do. <laughs> Who do I think would like to read this book? My, my friends. <laughs> I hope my friends will read the book. <laughs> and uh, my, 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 here's, here's, who the, here's who my dream audience is. is. Is that all of my friends will buy the book and it will keep it uh, in their toilet. <laughs> What? No, it's true. I, 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 from, and to this day, to this day, Deborah Pearson's toilet are, are, are the old chapbooks that I used to make. And people, friend, friends of theirs will meet me and say, oh God, yeah, I really like that poem you wrote. And I said, how did you find that poem? Oh, no, no, it's on, it's on Morgan and Deborah's, uh, it's on the top of their toilet. I, I, I read your poetry every time I visit their houses. And I think that's, and I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that. I, in, fact, I, in fact, I encourage you. Oh, wait, should I say goodbye? Yeah, do some kind of, yeah. Uh, really great, uh, no, hold on. What should I say to say goodbye? So to sum up, <laughs> love one another. No, um, <laughs> Ryan Van Winkle, that's me. New book, Tomorrow We Will Live Here. Crashaw Prize, fantastic. Inspiration, all over the place. And Forest Arts Collective, much more important than one little poet's book. Thank you. <laughs>